Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today is our pie day. Now, dolls, when I say pie, I mean sweet potato pie. I'll also be showing you how I make a cheesecake. So let's get started. So dolls, when I'm cooking anything that involves a custard, a filling, or a crust, I consider pie. <laughs> now dolls, if you already have baking pans, you can skip this step altogether. But something like pies, because I make so many of them so often, I just make my baking pans out of a simple piece of aluminum pan and an old button. Now I'm gonna show you how I did it. I used an old button and a ball stylus to create it. So I just cut out a small square, a little bit bigger than the button I'm gonna be using. And the general size of the button is not much bigger than a pop bottle cap, which is also a great item to use to make your pie crust in. So dolls, I just used the button and pressed the aluminum pan on top of the button. Now you have to be careful with your fingers because you don't wanna cut your fingers with the sides of the cut aluminum pan. So I used the ball stylus to just run around the outside or the perimeter of the button through the aluminum pan. Now it will take a little effort, dolls, take your time creating an outline with your ball stylus. Now you can actually use a piece of wood or a, a dull pencil to do this. But again, I had this metal ball stylus that I used to do this. And just go around as many times as you need to, to get a very defined shape. Now keep in mind, dolls, this is edited video. So it took me longer to create these than it did on this video. And you see the first couple, I had already made them previously. Now here, dolls, I just flipped it over to let you see what it looked like before I cut the extra part of the square off. And then I kind of defined the inside even a little bit more with the ball stylus. Now you dolls must forgive me because I did create three pans because my original intention was to make two sweet potato pies, a cheesecake, and a fruit filled pie or cobbler, like a peach cobbler or apple cobbler. Then I realized I didn't have any transparent or clear liquid Sculpey. So I will need to place an order. So I owe you dolls a video on how I make my fruit pies and cobblers. <laughs> so here I just rolled out a couple dough colored pieces of clay and pressed them into the little baking pan, just like you would do if you were making a real pie. Now I did use my larger ball stylus to make sure I got into the whole shape and just pressed it in to make sure that the center was as uniform as possible before I added my custard. Now dolls, be advised, my pies in miniature are just like my pies in real life. They are very basic, they're very common. The crust is imperfect, it's a little crooked, a little uneven, but I guarantee you these pies taste delicious. Now I put a ball of pre-mixed orange clay into the center as my custard, and I mixed this color previously, and after getting the pie crust filled, I added a thin snake of clay around the perimeter of the pie just to make the crust portion seem a little bit more pronounced. Now dolls, you can add as much or as little detail to your pies as you want. Now dolls, after I add the thin snake around the outer edge of the pie, I blend it in so it'll look as natural as possible and that it'll look like it's connected. But again, I don't, worry about making it look super, super neat and perfect because I don't want it to look like a commercial pie. I want it to look like a good old fashioned homemade sweet potato pie in which the ones I make are never perfect. <laughs> now, if you do want your pies to have a real uniform crust, make sure your snake is really pretty much the same size and then take the time to sculpt it around the edges and and create the beautiful fluted look that beautiful sweet potato pies have. Now dolls, I did take time trying to blend the crust and press it in. And I did do a very, very simple uh, fluted design to kind of make it look a little bit twisted. I just didn't take a lot of time with it because again, I wanted my pies to look very common and really homemade. Now, after you finish with your crust, you can definitely add texture to the surface of your pie with a toothbrush and any other variation of texturing and shading to the body of your pie and to the crust. And here I'm just adding another quick snake around the second pie. 
Now I went on to make the cheesecake, but I realized that I was going to need a pedestal or a plate. And this dowels is when you really need to be creative. So I went through my button and jewelry box and I found a big pretty blue button and a gold bead. I'm going to make a cake stand. Now dolls, this is a very simple cake stand. This moment dolls reminds me of my early days as a child trying to make food for my dolls. And I would use buttons and caps and beads and anything I could find to create beautiful creations for my dollhouse table. So I want you to just use your imagination and take your time. A little time and imagination will take you a long way. So anytime you got some big, flat, interesting buttons, save those. Those are plates. <laughs> so let me get on and finish up these sweet potato pies. Now, dolls, again, I didn't add a lot of texture to the top or to the crust. I just went ahead and added a little chalk pastel and then went over the top of my sweet potato pies with some triple thick glaze to give it that just cooked look that pies have when they've come out of the oven and they've been cooling and the sugar and the butter and the sweet potato have all melted together and settled on top of the pie. I think that looks really good. And I did the same thing to my little slice. And let's go ahead and finish up that whole piece of pie with the slice out as well. So now all these are all cooked and ready to sit on the dessert table. Now here I'm just comparing my new pies to the ones that I made last year. And I like them both. And there's my cake stand. So let's go ahead and make this cheesecake. So I cut the cheesecake out of, uh, actually it was a leftover tape cylinder. And I just used it to cut out the cheesecake color and the graham cracker crust color. Now that was my graham cracker crust. I make it a little bit thicker because I really like the taste of the graham cracker crust. So I almost make it like a thick platform at the bottom of my cheesecakes. Now I did use an old spin brush top to texture the outside of my cheesecake. And again, dolls, it's totally up to you. You can use as much or as little detail on your cheesecake as you like. It's up to you. I like the brushed look on the cheese part and then the wire brush texture on the graham cracker portion. Now I have to be totally honest with you dolls. When it comes to cheesecake, I'm really not interested in fruit on it at all. But I actually really do think the cherries or the strawberries or some type of fruit topping really makes it look pretty and interesting. And in honor of my dad, I'm going to put the cherries on top because he always liked cherries on his cheesecake. So that's what I'm going to do today. Now, I had to think of another option because, as I mentioned earlier in the video, dolls, I don't have any liquid clay that's transparent, and I needed to make the juice for my cherries to make it look realistic. So I had to come up with another solution. But in the meantime, I went ahead and made my slice. Now, dolls, keep in mind, it's always easier to create your slices on your cake without blurring or smudging the layers when the polymer clay is kind of cold. So you definitely want to sit it, either sit it in the refrigerator a minute, or if you live anywhere like I live where it's cold in the winter time, you can sit it like on a windowsill or something just to firm it up and make it easier to slice. My clay was a little bit warm because the house is warm, but it worked out. I was able to salvage that little piece and then texturize the inside where the graham cracker crust is. And I did use a small pen to texturize that part of the cheesecake from the inside. So it would make it look like it had been sliced. When you're satisfied with the look of your cheesecake and the crust, then you go on and add your topping. Now dolls, I had these little craft balls. I think they're made of some type of styrofoam, but I thought they looked like cherries and I thought they would work perfect for the topping for my cheesecake. So I shook them in one of my little bowls to make them easy to apply. Now be forewarned dolls, I've never used these little beads before in a project. So in the middle of preparing to add the cherries, I got an additional thought. I realized I had another piece that I wanted to add to the cake stand to give it a little bit more dimension. I really like this because it made it look a little bit taller and a little bit more ornate. So because both of these pieces that I'm gluing together are metal, I added a little dab of Gorilla 
super glue gel and that made it set really nice and tight i gave it a moment to dry but i thought that looked really pretty i also added a small piece of wax paper to the bottom of my cheesecake it reminded me of that old-fashioned parchment paper that they would put under cakes and pies i added a little glue and then shaped the paper around the base of the cake and again dolls this is just one of those details i just added just for a little additional realism, you could have added a doily, a piece of lace, or nothing at all. Now I'm going on to add these little styrofoam cherries. And as I mentioned, I've never used these before for cake toppings or anything else. And anyway, I thought they looked kind of cute. I added a layer of the triple thick glaze to the top of the cake. And although the triple thick glaze was making the little styrofoam cherries stick, I really didn't like the way the shine looked. I didn't show it here, but I did add a thin coat of acrylic paint. And then I added some acrylic paint to a bowl with a little UV resin, and then just coated the top of the cherries with the UV resin and the acrylic paint. The combination of the resin and the acrylic paint gave the cherry juice look to the top of my cherries rather than them looking dry. Now be very careful when you're using UV resin. I should have had on gloves. I didn't. I didn't touch anything, dolls. I coated it. I threw the brush away when I was done and I cured the little bowl when it was complete. So always be very careful and very cautious. Make sure to adhere to the handling instructions on the UV resin that you are using. And after I got the resin on top of my cherries the way I wanted it, I went ahead and cured it. Now again, Cure your items based on the instructions on your UV resin package. And here we are, dolls, a cherry cheesecake, specially made just for daddy. <laughs> I'm so excited about Thanksgiving this week, dolls, and it's almost time to set the table. Now, dolls, if you're interested in any of the materials I used today in this video, I have links in the description box below. Also, like, share, and subscribe, and always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's time to pull out the silverware now, dolls. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.